Hai, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to the channel. Dalam video kali ini, kita akan masuk the second chapter in matriculation syllabus, which is atomic structure. Okay, dalam chapter ni kita akan tengok tiga subtopik. Yang pertama adalah Bohr's atomic model. Yang kedua adalah quantum mechanics model. And yang ketiga adalah electronic configuration. Right. In this video, apa yang kita akan tengok adalah kita akan describe the Bohr atomic model. Lepas tu kita akan explain the existence of energy level in the in an atom. And then kita akan calculate the energy of electron yang berada di at this particular energy level. After that, kita akan juga calculate the energy of the transition of an electron and also the wavelength and the frequency of electron during this transition. So, macam nak cakap tadi, Bohr's atomic model. Bohr's atomic model is proposed by Niels Bohr in 1913. Okay, apa yang dia buat adalah dia propose satu model yang di mana dia kata di satu dalam satu atom tu di central dia ada nucleus ada proton and neutron while the electron dia circling atau orbiting the nucleus okay so it looks something like this so bila kita tengok sini apa yang kita nampak at central ni kita ada neutron and proton and also electron pun akan circling around surrounding the nucleus okay so untuk Niels Bohr propose this type of model apa yang dia perlu buat adalah dia kena hasilkan dia kena ada certain of assumption this assumption the scientific assumption is known as postulate ok ada empat postulate yang anda perlu tahu yang pertama adalah electron move in circular orbit ok dia move in circular orbit around the nucleus ok bila electron move in the circular orbit around the nucleus it does not radiate or absorb energy maksudnya dia tak akan ambil apa-apa energi dia tak akan release apa-apa energi so ini adalah the first postulate ok so dia nampak macam ni elektron ni dia akan bergerak mengelilingi you punya nucleus ok that is the first postulate the second postulate is the energy of electron is quantized ok quantized ni bermaksud fix kalau elektron tu berada in the first shell energy dia let's say 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule so energy dia di sepanjang shell ni akan sentiasa sama ok bila di, di dua sama juga yang ketiga pun sama juga and so on and this energy kita boleh calculate by using this formula ok en is equal to negative rh 1 over n square ok en is equal to negative rh 1 over and square where your rh is also is known as your Rydberg constant and n is your uh, principal quantum number ataupun number petala tu dah shell tu ok so ini yang saya cakap tadi so bila n ni dia determine di main energy level and kalau elektron tu berada terlalu jauh dari nucleus ok energy dia adalah kosong ok Kalau dia ada terlalu jauh dari nucleus, the energy will be zero. And energy ni akan ada negative sign untuk menunjukkan there is an attractive force. Attractive force antara siapa? Nucleus and also the electron. Okay, nucleus ni adalah positively charged entity sebab di dalam nucleus kita ada proton and neutron and electron di sini akan ada force of attraction antara mereka dua. Alright. So, Itu adalah postulate yang kedua. How about the, the third postulate? The third postulate states that one electron, okay, normally dia berada dekat ground state. Ground state ini adalah dia punya natural level dia. Okay, bear in your mind that ground state does not mean one. Ground state can be any number. Maksud elektron tu boleh, kalau contoh kita ada elektron, okay, at n is equal to 2, Itulah ground state dia Kan kalau di petala kedua Petala ketiga Okay So n equal to 3 and so on Itu ground state dia Okay Tapi Kalau kita supply energy pada elektron tu Dia boleh be excited To higher energy level Maksud dia boleh naik daripada n equal to 2 Pergi n equal to 3 ke 
ataupun dia terus lompat ke N is equal to 4 ke ok when enough energy tengoklah kalau dia absorb energy dia boleh excite naik atas ok ini proses yang dipanggil sebagai excitation ok this process is known as excitation now what happened dalam the fourth postulate Bos cakap at excited state bila di atas tu the electron is unstable ok bila dia tak stabil dia akan jatuh balik bila dia jatuh dia jatuh ke energy level yang lebih rendah ok bila jatuh ke energy level yang lebih rendah ok tadi dia dah ok tadi dia n is equal to 4 kan dia jatuh ke n is equal to 1 energy dekat sini lebih tinggi pada energi di sini so apa dia perlu buat dia perlu release energy and this release energy is in the form of light ataupun photon ok and we can actually calculate the energy difference between this level maksudnya masa dia jatuh ni berapa energy yang dia hilang kita boleh kira benda ni ok so ini adalah 4 4 postulate remember the 4 postulate were first electron move in circular orbit second the energy of an electron is quantized the third postulate when electron absorb energy it will excite to higher energy level which is known as excited state the fourth postulate states that at excited state the electron were unstable okay and then fall back to lower energy level and release energy in the form of photon Okay, so this is the four postulate Keempat-empat postulate ni yang bor guna Untuk menghasilkan dia punya bor atomic model yang kita tengok tadi Okay, now There are certain things that you have to know Okay, ground state Ground state is defined as the state which the electron have their lowest energy Ini energy dia paling rendah Excited state pula adalah electron Dia boleh shifted daripada lower energy level to higher energy level and energy level adalah energy associated with a specific orbit ataupun state ok kalau di sekolah dulu you belajar ok uh, you ada petala pertama n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 n is equal to 1 berisi maksimum 2 elektron n is equal to 2 berisi maksimum 8 elektron so those n is known as your energy level ok it's just the same thing Okay, we just change the terminology here. Okay, it is the energy level. Okay, the further away from the nucleus, the more positive the value lah. Alright. So, when electron, dia bila dia naik, okay, dia akan absorb certain energy. Bila dia jatuh pun, dia akan release certain amount of energy. Dan kita boleh calculate benda ni dengan, dengan banding energy at each level. Okay. Contoh, macam ni. Okay, kita tahu initial dia adalah delta E is ER is equal to RH 1 over N initial square N into initial while final adalah RH 1 over N final square okay. delta E dia adalah kita ambil final tolak initial kita substitute kedua-dua value di dalam ni okay. dan kita akan dapat this formula and at this formula nilai RH adalah 2.18 for the negative 18 joule ok bear in your mind that value of RH ni akan ada dua jenis ok you tengok nanti so disebabkan energy yang release ni adalah dalam bentuk light ataupun photon kita boleh actually kira dia punya wavelength ok dan juga dia punya frequency we know that delta E is equal to HV where H is your Planck constant V is your frequency and then ok we also know that lambda is equal to c over v so kita boleh kira delta e is equal to hc over lambda so there are several formula yang kamu dah belajar tadi ok the first formula to calculate the energy of electron at certain level yang kedua formula untuk kira transition dia yang ketiga daripada delta e kita nak cari dia punya frequency dan yang keempat daripada delta e kita cari dia punya wavelength ok so wavelength ni kita akan guna dengan speed of light lah which is 3.0 exponent 8 meter per second so ok ini adalah energy level you have to know how to draw the energy level ok 
Okay, ini energy level diagram. What you have to know here is kita start dengan n sama dengan satu, bukan yang kosong paling bawah. And you, as you can see, dia punya gap dia makin lama makin kecil. Bila sampai ke atas ni kita panggil sebagai dia punya convergence limit. Okay, ini adalah n is equal to infinity. Okay, nampak gap dia makin kecil. If I ask you to draw energy level, this is how you do it. Okay, you buat satu ni adalah energy, potential energy. And you buat gap ni gap tu dari bawah ke atas makin lama makin kecil antara energy level tu. Okay, kalau elektron dia absorb energy, dia akan naik atas. Kalau dia release energy, dia akan turun bawah. Okay, bear in your mind, it does not mean that kalau dia mula dari satu, dia akan habis di satu. Tak. Okay, it can be start from, okay, start from two, dia naik pergi, berapa ni? Say five, dia boleh jatuh pergi ke three, uh, what, four, sorry. Okay, two naik pergi six, jatuh ke empat. It can be like that. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next is, we want to calculate the energy. We want to do several examples lah. Okay, so the first example asks us to calculate the energy of electron at the second energy level. They mean to calculate the energy of electron at second energy level. You know that, kalau they mean to actually ialah EN, which is E2 is equal to negative RH1 over 2 square. Okay, RH adalah negative 2.18 times 10 power of negative 18 times 1 over 4 which is equal to ini adalah energi kalau dia berada di n is equal to 2 ok next ha, ini dia minta calculate energi at n is equal to 6 why not you try this Alright, kita tengok contoh yang ini. Okay, this example asks us to calculate the energy. Okay, for the transition, satu. Yang kedua, dia minta kita calculate dia punya frequency dan juga dia punya wavelength in nanometer. For an electron, dia punya transition daripada 5 pergi 3. So, initial dia, okay, initial dia adalah 5, final dia adalah Dia turun ke bawah So, the first thing that we have to do is We have to calculate the energy So, we know that Delta E Is equal to RH 1 over N initial square Minus 1 over N final square Okay So, you put the initial Over five square minus one over three square is equal to negative one point five five exponent negative nineteen joule. So ini adalah you punya energy for the transition. Kenapa energy dia negatif? Sebab bila elektron tu jatuh dia akan release energy. The second question asks us to calculate the frequency. We know that delta E is equal to H3 H is equal to 6.63 exponent 34 if your E the energy is 1.55 Exponent negative 19 Ok, apa yang perlu tahu kat sini adalah You kena ambil nilai yang Ok, you kena ambil nilai itu sebagai value saja You don't have to include the sign The sign is just an indication bahawa the energy is released Ok, 6.63 exponent negative 34 And you dapat you punya frequency is equal to 2.34 exponent 14 Unit dia adalah per second ataupun 
hertz and we can calculate dia punya okay dia punya wavelength wavelength is equal to mu is equal to c over lambda where lambda is equal to 3.0 exponent 8 divided by 2.34 exponent 14 you can dapat this is equal to 1.28 exponent negative 6 meter Okay, so ini adalah cara nak kira lah. So, itu saja untuk this video. Alright, see you later. Bye.